11. Great. Welcome to everyone online. Um, it's very good to see you. Um, welcome to everyone in the room. It's um, very good to see you too. Help yourself to drinks from the back. Uh, um, there's a strawberry one and a not strawberry one. Hopefully they'll be um, okay. They're very good. Help yourself to drinks from the back as you come in. Great. Good. Just one more minute to let everyone settle down with a drink. Do help yourself to, they're at the back, folks, um, on the back table. So don't sit down without one. Yeah, whatever's left. That's great. Um, so we're, we're nicely filling up here now. So the bribery worked. Um, you'll be pleased to hear online. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. yeah, so just one more minute and then we're going to go. <laughs> I must admit it was um, in a session like this from a conference um, many, many years ago that I first got involved in the overseas territories work. Um, subsequent to attending that session and becoming interested, I've been to a lot of the overseas territories. So you never know where this session might lead you. <laughs> um, it might lead you to visit a lot of brilliant places and, and meet a lot of wonderful people. Um, so, uh, I need Kirsty again. My slides are not playing. Hang on. Oh yes. So welcome very um, to this session uh, of the UK Overseas Territory Special Interest Group. My name is Katie Medcalf. I'm the convener at the moment, and this is Mike Barker, and he's deputy convener at the moment. These things can swap. <laughs> but um, and also we have Penny. Is Penny? with us yet. She's still she, was, she was upstairs directing people who's our secretary. Um, one of the things you might be interested in if you've not um, been to one of these events before is what are the UK overseas territories. Uh, they actually are made up of 14 territories uh, that are under the sovereignty of the United Kingdom but they're not part of the United Kingdom themselves and the Foreign and Commonwealth Office lists six priorities to ensure security, success and sustainability. So that's defence, resilient economies, cherishing the environment, making government work better, vibrant and flourishing communities and productive links with the wider world. As a special interest group, we're not only here to support cherishing the environment, but also I, th I feel we help a vibrant and flourish flourishing communities because you can't have one without the other. As we who've been in the conference have just heard, and hopefully productive links with the wider world, which is what this webinar um, and event is all about. Um, the UK Overseas Territories boast more biodiversity than the rest of the UK put together. They're made of three biodiversity hotspots, the Caribbean islands, the Mediterranean Basin and the Oceania Ecozone. Um, and the UK as a whole has a responsibility for protecting this priceless biodiversity which is shared between the UK government and the government of the individual territories. So it is of interest, it is of importance to uh, CIE. We're uh, a small special interest group but we're very committed and uh, we volunteer our time to support members working in the area. We provide networking, skill sharing, um, learn more about the island. And this is a un, um, ashamed plug. If you would like to get involved, if you'd like to join the SIG, please do come and talk to one of us at the end, particularly Penny, who would be very reliable at making a list of your names and emailing you back um, and, and welcoming you. Without further ado, I'm going to uh, launch into our programme. We have four talks. They're eight minute um, uh, speed talks and they're all extremely interesting and we're going to start with Claire Dell from um, Reef Research in Little Cayman. So hopefully the technology will work for me now and I can um, call up her talk and it will 
start fine. Um, so here we go, let's hope.
that's very that's great thank you very much i'm really sorry to those of you online um i think um i paused the sharing um when i started that next last video and i'm a bit um befuddled by the technology but we'll move on to mike and i hope that oh now i've stopped it altogether um hang on a minute let me just um let me just try and open it again right can you um i hope you online can actually um see now um alison can you see all right jackie hang on oh sorry i can see the slides sort of great um but um, can you still see now if I start it? Uh, yep, I see the main thing, but then I see the no notes in the next slide as well. I'm afraid that though people online, I, I'm working the technology, I'll only be able to either do this or you have just listened to it and not um, run it. So um, mm -hmm. That's right. they um, see the notes. it's okay if you see the notes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we'll run it like this and apologies that you couldn't see that first part. So this session is going to run on all four talks together and then discussion at the end. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Mike. So um, we pre-recorded a couple of the Overseas Territories contributors, so uh, we didn't have too many uh, issues with Zoom. Zoom's uh, a good technology. We have run a couple of webinars that have been fairly uh, hiccup free but but you never really can tell until you actually get started so um <clears throat> I, originally i was going to talk about darwin initiative project uh, in in relation just to uh, sargassum and particularly around the turks and caicos mm -hmm. i've slightly hijacked the opportunity to speak to broaden it out much more to talk about climate change given uh all of the uh, messages we've been hearing about the urgency for action in terms of climate change. Um, but I did want to make sure that I still picked up the Sargassum project, which is going on at, in, in the Turks and Caicos at the moment. Um, and it follows on very much from what Claire was saying about uh, coral and, um, and, and seaweeds. So uh, as, as um, as Katie's explained, the, the overseas territories. So, and Claire has also mentioned about um, sea level uh, temperature rise, surface, uh, surface sea temperature is going up and obviously causing uh, quite a range of effects. Um, mm -hmm. I obviously don't want to go into the climate change aspects of, of why that is, but certainly in terms of the impacts that is having in the overseas territories and elsewhere in the marine environment globally. Uh, there are, there, are, there are a large number of impacts. Some of those are quite complicated. And I just want to touch on one or two. Um, so in terms of uh, surface, sea surface temperature rise and ocean warming, um, as Claire has mentioned, there's been an increase in uh, seaweed on coral reefs, but actually that's a phenomenon that has been observed more or less globally. Uh, it, it, uh, occurs both for algae and my, uh, macro algae, so seaweeds, and also um, <clears throat> you'd expect also kelps um, and also uh, sargassum, which is a type of seaweed which occurs in the mid-Atlantic. Um, climate change is definitely uh, uh, playing a role there um, and, and actually there are some uh, positive uh, feedback uh, loops, which means that it's when the algae starts growing, actually, it, it can run away as a fairly positive uh, reaction to the uh, seawater uh, rise. Um, but uh, one of the things to say is actually these uh, these these effects are quite complicated, and it really depends on which communities, which marine communities you're looking at. Um, uh, obviously, on coral reefs, sea, seaweed uh, increases are negative, um, and uh, we've also seen that actually uh, sea temperature rise has impacted negatively uh, on kelp forests. Kelp are much more uh, uh, cool water temp uh, temperature uh, communities mostly um, and they've been uh, adversely affected particularly for one example is in Western Australia where kelp forests have been uh, more or less completely lost over quite a large area of their 
uh, territory and completely replaced by uh, seaweed turf. So in terms of um, <clears throat> blue carbon, which is one of the things I just did want to touch on, um, there, in terms of carbon sequester, uh, capture, um, the, the, some of the marine and coastal uh, plant communities are well known for their ability to store away large amounts of carbon. Uh, mangrove, seagrasses, um, and salt marsh is all well known for those sorts of effects. But actually there's been some research recently that's saying that uh, seaweed and seaweed growth, depending on where it is, can also contribute to that. And there's been some eDNA test tagging that has demonstrated that um, uh, bits of seaweed when they break off, if they can get to the deep ocean, they will then um, pretty much fall to uh, the deep ocean and be lost to the environment and therefore therefore be uh, captured and, and lost from the carbon cycle. And so actually <clears throat> there, are, um, there are some quite complicated uh, factors going on in the sea. But um, in terms of biomass and biomass growth, it could actually be that there, there, is, there is more carbon being lost to the seabed than, than scientists have uh, previously thought. Um, but there are also more local adverse effects. And this is the project that I was talking about in Turks and Caicos. Um, you might think that that's a picture of a funny colored beach, but actually that is an enormous mat of sargassum that is just uh, washed up uh, in, in, in one of the local bays. Um, and sargassum, the sar sargassum sea is in the gyre in the mid-Atlantic and uh, sometimes uh, has uh, infrequently occurred that you get inundations in the uh, eastern seaboard and also in the Caribbean. Um, this is happening much, much more frequently and, and in much bigger volumes than has ever been recorded before, um, and particularly since 2011. And this is where the project has come from. Um, the local community were uh, talking to Darwin Institute about whether there was, uh, and uh, researchers in the University of Greenwich to see if there were any solutions in terms of treating the sargassum once it gets to the islands. Because obviously once it gets there, there's an enormous biomass that is washed up. Um, <clears throat> so, um, that, that biomass has some quite significant effects uh, locally. I mean, obviously it doesn't make the beaches look very nice and so there are impacts on tourism, um, but there are also impacts on uh, fishing efficiency and also impacts on biodiversity. Um, some of the sargassum mats when they come across are so large and so thick that actually air breathing uh, sea creatures such as the sea turtles and dolphins have been known to suffocate under these mats because they're so large. Um, but, but obviously, um, <clears throat> so part of the project and the, the project is ongoing, it's going to run for two years. The first site visits were this summer um, and Saim and the Saim uh, special interest group is providing uh, will provide at the end some of the outputs in terms of um, providing talks and facilitation of the outcomes uh, through through Simon through webinars such as this, uh, as well as uh, University of Greenwich providing feedback and uh, dialogue in terms of the local communities on Turks and Caicos. Um, at the moment, um, <clears throat> there are two. There are two main ideas that we're investigating in terms of what we could possibly do with the sargassum. Um, one is around soil conditioner and whether there are ways of uh, embedding it within the local terrestrial environment. Um, there has been an idea um, that we need to test about whether there's opportunities to incorporate it within an uh, an anaerobic digestion that would create biomass and potentially electricity as well, biogas rather. Um, there are some quite 
difficult technical issues around using sargassum for that sort of uh, thing. And also these inundations are infrequent uh, and irregular. So you don't really want to build an enormous piece of plant and then find that actually nothing washes up for the next two years because uh, you don't have anything to feed into it. So there, there, are, there are some very practical uh, questions that still need to be sorted out. And as I say, that project is going to run for the next 18 months or so, and then hopefully we'll have another seminar and give you some of the answers. Um, but in terms of my last slide, I did just want to say that, you know, obviously this is dealing with some of the symptoms of climate change. But in terms of discussions we've been having elsewhere over the last day or so, um, particularly uh, some of the discussions we were having at the Fellows Forum uh, yesterday, I just wanted to pick up on two, two key points. And that is that obviously locally in the overseas territories, but actually this is something that as practitioners we can do wherever we're doing work. We need to be looking at the management restoration of um, as I've said here, blue carbon ecosystems in terms of carbon capture, but actually, you know, as terrestrial ecologists or freshwater ecologists, you could also be doing your part and building that into net gain. Um, net gain doesn't just need to be about biodiversity, it can also be about people, but also if you're doing net gain for salt marshes or wetlands uh, or salt uh, or uh, upland mires or fenland, then the, the carbon capture in those sorts of ecosystems can be really significant. Um, so I would, I would suggest that you need to just think about those sorts of opportunities and the sort of work that you might do. Um, in terms of the marine, uh, the overseas territories, um, probably the key thing that we will try and facilitate and lobby for uh, with the UK government is making sure that the marine protected areas provide the resilience um, to ensure that the marine ecosystems around the overseas ter territories can, can continue and be flexible in the way that they re react to climate change um, and the way they set up because um, the marine protected areas take pressures off in terms of some of the fishing disturbance and other aspects that uh, would otherwise impact on those systems. And, and I'm done. Thank you, Mike. That's brilliant. That's excellent. Thank you. Um, again, apologies to those on the screen that um, we are, um, uh, you're seeing the slide master view rather than the actual view. Um, so next talk is by Alison Copeland and um, uh, I just need to go back and share it again. Hang on a second. Um, and uh, I'll just start this one playing.
sorry.
that's a great talk. Thank you very much. Um, apologies to all of you on um, line. I know that um, I know that you've been having trouble um, hearing, and um, we are going to um, share the presentations by email and put them on the website so that you can get um, access to them. So apologies if you didn't hear that. We have one more um, presentation to go. This is a recording and it's um, from Steph from the Falkland Islands and uh, I will need to swap the output so that um, those of you online might not hear be able to talk to us while it's running. So um, bear with me a second.
Right. Hopefully, um, everyone can still hear me um, online. Um, I can hear you. Excellent. Um, I'm very sorry for some of the technical problems that have happened online. Um, uh, hopefully you can still hear, see, and well, if you can still hear, that's fine. And you might see a nice picture of one of our uplands, which is a Scotland um, uh, bog pool <laughs> um, at the moment. Great. Any questions and comments from those in the room following those four talks? Any observations on how the um, issues facing uh, some of our colleagues in the overseas territories map our issues? Um, anyone like to start me off? Hi, Karen. Can you just explain what your role is, what Sain's role is in, in the projects that you've heard about? I'm not sure about that. So, um, um, got a role in the Sargassum project, which Mike can cover. Um, in terms of the other projects, um, only to um, help them spread the word about their project, what they're doing and how they're doing it. So, so for <clears throat> most of the Darwin Initiative projects, there'll be a dissemination uh, uh, requirement, but we're not partners with all of those projects, but we still are providing a function in terms of dissemination. Uh, for the Sargassum project in particular, um, really our, our role is um, twofold. One is that I'm providing some technical input and review, particularly around um, some of the outputs that will come after the, the field work next year. Um, but also we have that dissemination role and, and that's what we're doing. And, and actually in terms of the special interest group itself, um, having tried and tested a, a number of different models about how we can engage with the overseas territories, certainly the recent um, events that we've put on have been mostly webinars where we've linked in uh, people talking from different overseas territories in a number of small mini talks. So we probably might do two or three talks all, all live normally um, and, and then have conversations that run from the Falklands to St. Helena to the Caribbean to all at the same time. And that can get quite complicated, but it, it, it it fulfills a function that nobody else is doing, which is getting the overseas territories to talk to each other and share knowledge. Uh, and actually, we're we're quite well positioned to do that. So. Yeah, yeah, and we also have very strong links to um, Mike Pilsowski and the UK Overseas Territories Conservation <laughs> Forum. So we've also run joint events with them. Um, and they have a sort of conservation role um, mm. and a conservation sharing role as well. And, and sorry, and one more. And we did also um, <coughs> run a joint event uh, two or three years ago with the Marine Special Interest Group, where we looked at marine protected areas in particular. Um, and that ran in the Darwin Centre in London. And that mm. was actually very well attended in the room, um, but it was also um, transmitted as well. Has any of you got any particular questions um, for um, uh, any of the presenters? Um, Steph actually can't be with us, but the other presenters are here. Yeah. I was wondering, <coughs> particularly with the, uh, <coughs> the presentation on the Cayman Islands, whether there was any, any implication of nitrogen increases. Did you hear that? Um, it was. Uh, is there any implication of nitrogen increases in the um, Cayman Islands um, when you're looking at the reefs, um, Cathy? Are you still there? So, if Cathy isn't there, but, um, in terms of the work um, on the Sargassum project, so certainly climate change is a factor, but also um, deforestation and, and uh, nitrogen deposition so and it may well be nitrogen <coughs> deposition from air emissions that are just blowing into the oceans um, but also nitrates coming from if they're coastal sites mm -hmm. coming from uh, uh, water courses as they run off so farm farm runoff development as well is a big problem so a lot of the islands don't have any fresh water 
Uh, so all, um, but they do have channels that run in storm conditions. So if they're doing development near the coast and you get a big storm, then you get huge sediment um, loads into the sea. And we've actually done satellite image analysis showing where these sediment plumes have gone post hurricane and post storm events. Um, and they have a huge effect of smothering the reefs. So anybody else, any questions? Yeah, at the back. That, that's a question um, for those online saying how frequently do big rafts of gas and accrue? So they used to happen infrequently, um, uh, but certainly the fr both the frequency and the size of them have increased um, in the last decade or so. Um, but it's still, it's still fairly infrequent and it's irregular. So there isn't a pattern to it um, that anyone has been able to spot yet. Um, so, and that's one of the reasons why building a big anaerobic digester to feed it all into, it might not be that sensible. Because if, if it just stops for a while and everyone is reliant on biogas from the anaerobic digester, what are they gonna do? Um, so, I mean, I think there are some practical issues. It seems to be getting worse, but that's anecdotal at the moment. And part of the project is to try and quantify some mm -hmm. of these issues. Hi. I just have another, another comment, it's slightly obscure. There was something on the radio um, last week about the extinction of a creature called Jeffrey Seacow. Now, the Jeffrey Seacow apparently um, was on the west coast of, of America. And it went extinct in the 19th century. And people thought that that was hunting. But now the latest theory is um, that uh, it was actually hunting of sea otters that was the root cause. Now, sea, water, sea otters graze on urchins, and sea urchins um, will uh, unroot um, kelps. They, right. they chop them off at the, at the bottom. So I just wonder whether there were any uh, any implications of of um, uh, plant eating uh, uh, mammals or any such creatures it, it, as part of the story. Yes, <laughs> I, I would <laughs> yes. think so. Um, I mean, I, I I think the strap line on one of my slides that said um, the implications and effects of climate change are complex. Um, and yeah, I mean, there are there are lots of knock on effects and um, and I think a lot of those are not well understood yet, mm. actually. Mm. Um, uh, so almost certainly. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a report just recently about the importance of parrot fish as a, as a um, seaweed eating um, species. And if you lose your parrot fish, which people like to eat, then that, again, is a complex interaction. Yeah. I, I, I think we are only just beginning to realise how complex these systems are. Um, and so these sort of Darwin funded projects are really important. Well, it's six o'clock. So I know you've, we've all been uh, listening and concentrating all day. Thank you very much for coming. I hope it's been interesting. Penny mm -hmm. will take anybody's names who want to join the special interest group. If you want to ask any more questions, please do. And thank you very much indeed to our presenters. Um, very much appreciate your efforts. If you want to um, make any comments about any of the questions that asked, uh, drop me an email and I'll uh, pass them on. And we will share all the presentations um, as well to all the participants online. Sorry about the technical issues, which I was unable to solve completely. And I will work out how to use Zoom properly one day. <laughs> so, so um, good afternoon to all of you in the Caribbean and good evening to all of us here. Uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you very much.